Our message is simple. Leave our kids alone. Darling, nobody's coming for your kids. The kids at this event are the children of parents who have half a brain and they have chosen to buy a ticket and go with their children to this event. Nobody's taking your hand and your child's hand and walking you up to a drag queen and saying, now sit down or else. Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma. Welcome back to sweaty summer videos with your host, Sweaty Emma. It's still very hot. So today I want to talk about a specific uh, couple of news articles about an event that took place in Ireland. I think this is interesting and I've chosen this because the exact same thing with the same backlash is happening in lots of different places and online, so I think it'll be good to chat about. We're going to talk about a drag story time event and some of the protesting and then counter-protesting that went on around that. Now every time I mention anything to do with, especially trans rights, but anything to do with the LGBTQ plus community, I get comments from people saying things like, yeah I support the good queers, I just don't like things like drag story time. That's an actual comment I got on my last video about how trans people are disproportionately affected by violence and hate crime. First of all, priorities, my friend. <laughs> If you are someone that thinks like that, if you feel that is representative of your opinion, I would please kindly ask you to watch this whole video to listen to the actual events of the story, what takes place at a drag story time, who's there, how many adults are there, and then I'd really love you to think about the kind of people that do oppose this thing, where, where your hesitancy around these events might come from, and just give it a really good think, because I think so much of the backlash and hatred around stuff like drag events is just misinformation and exaggeration to promote an agenda. So let's talk about what's really going on and uh, get into some stuff. So there was recently a drag story time event in Belfast. Now in case you're not familiar, Ireland has quite a strong religious population, there's a complicated history uh, between Catholics and Protestants in Ireland, but it does mean, for the sake of this video, we'll just say there are a lot of Christians in Ireland, and a lot who have particularly strong or more sort of old school views. That is improving over time, that is changing, uh, but it's still a strong, there's a strong religious presence there. So there was this drag story time event that took place in Belfast at a place called the Mac. The storyteller is a drag queen called Cherry on Top, which is just a phenomenal drag name, I really think. Cherry on Top, aka Matt Cavan, talks about uh, how this event kind of came to be. I'd done a drag queen story time at Hollywood Arches as part of the Eastside Arts Festival around seven years ago. From that, Young Art, which is a Belfast-based children's art festival, uh, got in touch. They asked if I would partake in the festival, and that's where the relationship began. So it was Young Art who organised this event at the Mac. It was a ticket only private event and they sold out the day they went on sale. Very popular. I had a baby there who was eight months old, right up to a child who was 11. The stories that I'm reading are all about being individual and being different, and that it's okay to be different. We do songs and dances and play games too. The event, this is important, the event is never just me and the children. Their accompanying adults are there and are highly encouraged to take part in the event too. The facts of the event then, start to finish. You have somebody, basically a character actor, you have somebody in elaborate costume and makeup, fully covered, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing sexualized about Cherry on Top's outfit or the event or anything like that. I'll get onto why I mentioned that in a minute. A character actor in elaborate costume and makeup, reading stories to children about being different, doing songs and activities. All the children have an accompanying adult, they join in as well. They read stories, they sing songs, they play games. Presented with the honest to god facts, it's hard to understand how anyone could have a fucking problem with that, right? And this is why I say that the resistance to, you know, drag acts or whatever, uh, and involving children and stuff is entirely based on misinformation. And you can see that because so much of the uh, the controversial acts and stuff that are shared online, people have shared like misleading photos of say a drag act in, I don't know, a burlesque environment or something that is wearing something completely different than what they were wearing when they were doing the kids activities, because obviously. Anyway, so that's what it is. It is a nice storytelling event. All the children have adults present. There is nothing weird. There is nothing sexual. And yet, there is a whole protest outside. There's a group of protesters outside the event. The protest group is called Parents Against 
grooming. So what is grooming? Grooming, this is according to the NSPCC, that is the National... Oh, fuck, the National... That is the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Yes, I did have to look that up. According to the NSPCC, grooming is thus. When someone builds a relationship, trust, and emotional connection with a child or young person so they can manipulate, exploit, and abuse them. How in any way is a costume storyteller reading stories to a group of children on one day in one event there's no trust building there's no relationship building parents of all the children are present how is that in any way grooming well it's not it's not how is grooming used as a term by bigots to describe the lgbtq plus community entirely differently anti-lgbtq plus people use grooming as a way to suggest that people being and essentially despite there being no trans people involved in a lot of events like these these people use these terms to imply that most of the time trans people but also gay people etc just by being around children just by being in an environment near children could somehow turn those children gay or trans or queer in some way not only is that absurd but there's no way that that could happen by somebody in a costume reading a story and this person this is this is matt remember who is essentially just being a character actor there's no there's nothing remotely grooming about it there's nothing remotely grooming about a man presenting in traditionally female clothing, although it's not, it's an elaborate extension, it's a fictionalization of uh, feminine dress. But there is nothing about using a stage name and dressing as a woman and telling stories that is different from what somebody putting on a bear costume and reading Winnie the Pooh to a group of children. You're not going to turn those children into bears. And even if you, even if that was possible, even if one, one single event of telling some stories to a group of children was enough to turn them into whatever you are doing at the time, you'd be turning children into drag artists. That still doesn't make them trans or gay or whatever it is that these people are afraid of. It's very strange. The only way you can comprehend this as a realistic fear is that queer phobic parents think that children will see a man dressed in female clothes and then their children will think that, you know, the little boys will think it's okay to wear a dress or something. And they're terrified of that because they do think that that will make them gay or whatever. So much bigotry, and I think transphobia is included in this, boils down to internalized homophobia. I honestly think that's at least part of the reason that trans women get so much more hate I think that bigoted men are afraid that they'll be attracted to a trans woman and that that in some way makes them gay. I, I genuinely think that that must be part of the reason. I've been the target of abuse, this is Matt again, I've been a, the target of abuse for the last few weeks. I've been getting death threats for reading stories to children about how it's okay to be different with their parents in the room at a private event that the parents all a-okayed and decided to take their children to. I've been getting death threats and have had to get the police involved. I was called a paedophile online. Again, nothing remotely paedophilic. These two terms, paedophile and grooming, used against the LGBTQ plus community, again, drag doesn't necessarily mean gay or trans or anything like that. There is crossover because the queer community is actually open to self-expression, whatever. There's crossover, but that doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. There is nothing remotely paedophilic about this compared to any other storytelling event. The parents are all present, there's no relationship building, it's just a, it's just a fun afternoon event. They're telling stories, they're singing songs, they're having fun. Paedophile and groomer have been adopted by bigots as slurs against the LGBTQ plus community. They've done this, I, I believe they've done this because these are very triggering terms, especially for parents because that's your biggest fear, that somebody will take advantage of your child. It's completely inappropriate. Matt says he will not be stopping his drag act with Cherry on top and will not allow those against what he, what he loves to do stop him from doing it. It's made me realise how important this is, because if it wasn't, then it wouldn't have ruffled feathers. 
I want to make Northern Ireland a better society for young people. A better society than I grew up in where I was terrified that I was gay. I was terrified that I maybe wanted to wear a dress and still be a boy. The books that I choose are all about acceptance and equality and diversity. They are books about what different families look like. You can have two mums or two dads, and you might not have either. People think that I was trying to brainwash children. I don't really understand that because for me, being a gay person is not a choice, and it is nothing that can be forced upon you. Even if you don't believe that, we've done videos on this channel about people who don't believe that it, people who believe that it is a choice. Even if you believe it is a choice, you're not going to convince someone to become gay, especially in Northern Ireland, after one afternoon of reading books about it being okay to be different. That's just not reality. It's a fictionalised imagining of, of reality. The Justice Minister of Northern Ireland made a great comment in support of Cherry on Top that I thought was like, oh yeah, duh. Um, it, it resonated with me, I liked it. People hating on drag queens reading stories to kids have little to do. As a kid, I recall annual Panto, where the principal boy was a girl and the Panto dame was a man, and no one felt the need to hold an exorcism at the theatre. Yes. And I said this online recently, the history of theatre, especially Shakespearean theatre, is of men doing all the roles, and therefore dressing as women and girls and acting as women and taking on those roles and doing the makeup and the costume, the same as, as modern drag. Panto still has that, we still have dames and people watch it and laugh and enjoy it. It's never ever been an issue, it's always been something that you take your children to for fun. It's never turned an audience of children gay or trans, nobody's ever been afraid of that, because it's not a real thing. Somehow it's a problem when it's a drag queen, when it's somebody who does it as part of their career or an extracurricular, somebody who does it more often than once a year at the pantomime, then it's a problem. So there was actually a Belfast councillor, or a former councillor, attending the protest, the Parents Against Grooming uh, protest of this drag event, so I want to talk about that. I'll share these articles down below, by the way, so you can read them later. Jolene Bunting. Miss Bunting told the Irish News the protest was in opposition to child grooming. Now we've been through this, we've been through the events, we've been through the fact that it was a private ticketed event, the only children that went there were children that were brought there by their parents, their parents who bought tickets and decided it would be a fun event. We know that grooming doesn't in any way relate to this activity, in no way. So why would she say that? What is her internalised fear? I think it's homophobia. I think it's homophobia and transphobia rooted in homophobia. Our message is simple. Leave our kids alone. Darling, nobody's coming for your kids. The kids at this event are the children of parents who have half a brain and know that this is just a fun story time event about how it's okay to be different and they have chosen to buy a ticket and go with their children to this event. Nobody's coming for your children. Nobody's, nobody's taking your hand in your child's hand and walking you up to a drag queen and saying, now sit down or else. I can confirm that both Catholics, Protestants, and non-religious people attended the Parents Against Grooming protest today. Here's the important thing. The protesters were vastly, vastly outnumbered by counter-protesters. There were way more people in support of the event bringing pride flags and having a good time, there were way more people, there were way more people there basically making sure that these protesters didn't do anything to harm anyone at the event. The police also had a presence there um, to maintain public order or whatever. <laughs> the, uh, the protesters, the protesters were seen pouring holy water on the ground near the venue. Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. I don't know, even if you believe holy water is a thing, I don't know what pouring it on the ground near a venue where a storytelling event is happening is gonna fucking do. Because, you know, Catholics, Protestants, and non-religious people, blah blah blah, whatever. It's her way of saying it's not a Catholic versus Protestant thing, you know, it's not one or the other, we're all here. If you are a Catholic or a Protestant, if you're a Christian person, in the Bible, Jesus was walking around sharing stories with everyone. Stories about being a good person, right? Jesus did not discriminate against who he shared his stories with or his time with. Jesus was hanging out with prostitutes. Jesus was, Jesus was hanging out with tax collectors. Where do you think, honestly, 
where do you think Jesus would sit on an event like this? Do you think Jesus would be with the protesters? with the counter-protesters? Or do you think Jesus would be inside enjoying the storytelling with the children and cherry on top? Because that's what I think. I believe in Jesus, but I think if he was real, I think he would be inside. Based on the majority of stories about Jesus, I think he would be inside sharing the stories with children. I don't really understand the employment of holy water here either. As far as I'm aware, holy water is used primarily by Catholic churches and stuff for like baptisms. Um, water has to be blessed by a priest or whatever, and then it can be used to anoint, baptize, whatever. I, I just don't understand the function of pouring holy water on the floor. <laughs> I don't get it. That seems like something that an atheist would do to be like, no, fuck you. <laughs> if you have a good explanation, let me know because I, I'm, I don't get that one. Another counsellor made a great statement. This is um, Seamus de Fuit. Um, Seamus de Fuit uh, joined the counter-protesters for a time um, and made some really good statements. Again, same kind of statement as the previous counsellor did on Twitter. Drag has been involved in age-appropriate entertainment like pantomime since before Northern Ireland even existed. I mean, look at the popularity of Mrs. Brown's Boys. It's a, a TV show where a comedian plays like the matriarch of a family. A male comedian plays the matriarch of a family. Fucking people love that shit. It's not very good, but people love it. People love that shit. It was everywhere for a while and it's considered family entertainment. It's not a problem on TV. It's not a problem on Panto. Once again, I, I feel like if it's in a situation where these people, these religious people or otherwise bigoted people can assume that the person in the role is straight, then they don't seem to have an issue with it like Mrs. Brown's Boys or Panto. If they can assume that the person playing the dame is straight, then they're not afraid. If it's a drag artist, it's associated with the LGBTQ plus community. We know that Cherry on Top is played by a gay man. Suddenly it's a massive issue. It's homophobia with bells on top. It's disappointing that even in, this is still the counsellor, even in 2022, a small rabble can find it in themselves to protest a family-oriented event at the end of the most successful Belfast Pride to date. First of all, well done Belfast. Well done for a very successful Pride. I genuinely am really happy, even though, even though it upsets me that this is such a widespread thing and that people like Matt can do this wonderful event for children and get death threats and be and be called all these slurs just for the sake of existing and wanting to just for the sake of trying to make children's lives better that really upsets me but i am really happy to read about it in a context where so many people are saying that's stupid why would anyone have a problem with it we support it there were way more counter protesters than protesters it does make me really happy to see so many people on the right side of things. So if you still have this feeling like, well, yes, but I just don't think drag artists are good or should be around children. I think it's grooming. I think they need to leave our kids alone. Why do you think that? What is it about this that is different from, say, something like Panto? And if your answer is, well, no, I've read about events where they were dressed inappropriately or doing dances or whatever. I want you to look up the actual event and learn everything you can so much of the telling of these events and these stories is exaggerated, is, is just lies, is taking photos from different contexts or of different people. So you need to very carefully assess what the actual facts were. And if it's still something you disagree with based on the way they were dressed, the kind of event, whatever, remember that the majority of these events are like the one we've just looked at. Totally family friendly. Adults in the room. Do not use one story shared by hateful right-wing media to bias your opinion on trans rights, on gay rights. I cannot explain how awful it feels and how worried I am that a trans person will see a comment like that when I'm talking about trans people being killed, the high rates of suicide, the just the, the pushback on anti-discrimination laws, and for somebody to be like, well, yeah, but I don't really like drag queens. As if that should interfere with people having equal human rights. Because you never, you never ever say, you've never ever said to yourself, well, 
I support the good straights, but I don't like when some of them do football hooliganism, you know, or whatever. All people, all people, everyone, even the ones, this is the tough part for some people for some reason, even the ones you don't fucking like deserve equal rights. There are some anti-trans trans YouTubers, wrap your head around that. There are some trans YouTubers that I, that I think are deeply problematic. I still want them to have fucking equal rights. It doesn't matter if I like them, because that's not the point of equality. You might not even realise that you're being used in this way if you think, well, I want to support, you know, the good ones, but I hear all this scary stuff about, you know, drag or grooming or all this stuff. You're being used for bigotry the same way people were being used for racism. The UK, and lots of other places, sadly, has a history of that mentality. Well, I like the good black people. It's a thing. I like the good gay people. Not the ones who do engage in the lifestyle, you know, driving around late at night and picking up strangers. That's... It's the same thing. It doesn't matter what group is being hated against, it's the exact same tactics. And if you're falling for that, you are going to be on the wrong side of history. The only way to protect the children is to make sure they're happy and safe and comfortable. There is nothing, nothing, nothing remotely grooming about this, and yet that is the angle that protesters take with their fucking holy water. Grooming is being used as a slur against LGBTQ plus people here. It's being used as a slur to imply that children are unsafe with queer people. And that is not okay, because it's not true. I hope you found this interesting and not too upsetting. I will leave links to the articles down below. I just want to remind you again that overall this has been a really positive experience. Way more people were supportive of this event. It was the most successful Belfast Pride Week ever. The event itself sold out straight away. People had a really good time. These bigoted voices are loud and pervasive, so it's good to remind ourselves that the silent majority support equal rights. The thing we need is to encourage those people to be louder, those voices to be louder than the hate. Thank you so, so much for watching. Do leave your thoughts down below. I better wrap up before I sweat my entire face off. Before we go, I would like to give a big shout out and a thank you to my giant chickens over on Patreon. <laughs>